Hey everyone, welcome to more Premiere Drafts with Forgotten Realms. I've been doing great. My last run was- my first run was 7-2, my next run was 6-3. And that last loss, you could argue, was my fault. I, there could have been a lot of plays where I could have done better. First we did green-blue, then we did blue-white, so blue has been a big color in my pie. Whew. Let's do this strong, let's do this right, let's get it done. I'll be trying to explain my moves the best I can, but we only have so much time. Big blue pie. Mmm, delicious. Blueberries. <laughs> delicious. I think, honestly, the problem with my last deck is it didn't have counter spells of all things. <laughs> it was super slow, and it didn't have ways to like deal with their big threats. Alright, Eye of Vecna. I just... You're paying two mana for card draw, it's not going to do much card draw. Druid class will gain you life, and then it will get you additional lands. Recto Steel is the best in the format? Yeah, but then you need to get all the cards for Recto Steel. Hmm. Alright, so I'm thinking... Yeah, so Precipitous Drop, honestly, is good if we want to take a common. Otherwise, um... Let's see. I don't think Druid class is good enough. Eye of Vecna is also really weird, because it's 2 mana to cycle itself, and then it's, like, pay 4 mana, 4 life to draw 2 cards. And, like, it does scale in the late game, but there's so many good cards that scale in the late game. That's what I found. There are so many good cards to scale in the late game, and while it's good, to, you need them. So it's either Precipitous Drop or Hunter's Mark. This ventures, this kills, this guarantees kills, this guarantees ventures. This can't be countered. I'm going to go with Hunter's Mark this time. But Precipitous Drop, I do definitely see that. I just... I want to pick the uncommons. I want to pick the harder-to-get cards. Alright, Portable Hole did amazing last time we used it. Or of Dragon Kind, we need dragons. This, we need um, enchantments. Otherwise, it's a 3-math, three 3-2, three even then. Uh, before I grab Portable Hole, let's see. Pixie Guide. Bar the Gates is pretty nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to grab Portable Hole. It's just, it's a great removal spell. Um, there's a lot of white in this pack, but I don't really want to base it on that. Uncommon was taken. Because, yeah. Strange, a lot of the bombs feel, it feels like a lot of the bombs are uncommons instead of rares. Because there's definitely a lot of rares that you can't really pick. Faraday's Fireball also seems pretty good, but Portable Hole just was, it's very efficient. Yes, there have been times where there's no targets for it, but a lot of times we have just random two drops lying about and sometimes they get a class and all classes cost one or two mana so we're going with portable hole um might be getting a blue card on my next time around if i don't have a color bag of holding as always i absolutely adore having one bag of holding in my deck i think every single one of my decks has had at least one bag of holding and every single time it's won me at least one game do not underestimate bag of holding so Contact Other Plane is also good. Ranger Hawk is decent if you have enough creatures. Hill Giant Herd Gorger. I'm seeing a notable lack of blue. Or of green. Hmm. Loathsome Troll is recurring, but it's a very slow recurring threat. I think Contact Other Plane will be better than Loathsome Troll. Um. But I think Loathsome Troll will be better than Boulette. So it's whether I pick the Loathsome Troll or the blue. I have been noticing a lot more blue being rotated around than green, but... Hmm. Oh, thank you very much! Oh my gosh, I, I can't see it because of the angling. Let's change that. Leonardo Lion has just subscribed. Thank you very much, Leonardo. I do appreciate it. I very much appreciate it. So I'm trying to think... Do I take Contact Other Plate or Loads of Troll? I think because it's at the Uncommon, I do want to try out Uncommons where I can. And because I already have a green card. Um, I will not deny blue is very good. As I said, my last two decks had blue in it. so And they both turn out well. And we get, you find a Villain's Lair as the only really playable here. Other than Zombie Ogre. Yeah, I think we're going with you find a Villain's Lair. We could pick the Mimic, but I'm not going to commit to that we are these two colors anytime soon. We've been seeing a lot of blue get passed around. These are not um, white cards worth taking. And also, notes. Learn their secrets synergizes really well with Back of Holding because it's any discard. 
So it's loot if I need it, counterspell if I want. It's counterspell when I want it, loot when I need it, and it synergizes with Bag of Holding, which I always pick one. Oof. Circle of the Dreams Druid. This is a three mana two one. Don't get your hopes up. Clever Conjurer, I've always loved. Um, Neverwinter Dryad is an early game drop. I think I am going to go with Clever Conjurer. Um, Ambush on the Road is not as bad as you might think it is, but I just love Clever Conjurer. Black is seeming quite open, though. Do note that Black has been seeming quite open. Oof. Yeah, if I get to pick 9 Precipitous Drop is there, that tells me Black is open and I'm, drop I'm jumping into it. Alright. Hill Giant, Herd Gorger is a great endgame. Um... We find the Curse Idol actually has targets, because there's feeds like Bag of Holding to destroy, there's equipment to destroy, and then venturing, getting a treasure and venturing into the dungeon is perfectly acceptable. I think I'm going to grab you find a Curse Idol, but Hail Giant Herd Gorger is very close, but we already have a loathsome troll for late game. And... Maybe I still take Herd Giant, Hail Giant Herd Gorger? Hmm... I think the first Herd Gorger is good. Um, well, actually, no. I probably should... I should have done the other one, because I only want one curse. Yeah, whatever. Alright. This is pick eight. This is the last one before we rotate back. Rhyme Shield Frost Giant's a nice late game. Um, Eyes of the Beholder is a kill spell. So, if we see black... If we see a lot of black, this could be good. But Frost Giant just... It does its job well. Um... Sylvan Shepherd is a 3-drop. I definitely need more early game, but not right now. Alright, so here's what Rodea back. A Vampire Spawn. Underdark Basilisk. It looks like we're going... Blue-green is open enough. The fact that Basilisk made it all the way back in my first pack. Um, the other one would have been nice. Um, bar the Gate, as I said, I like counter spells. Um, and the blue-green seems to be the, pa the pick for me. This is just like... The color combination that calls to my skills, calls to my desires. So while there was a lot of white in that pack, we only have Portable Hole as, like, a good white card. Alright, Arcane Investigator is a great blue card, because it's a... Basically, it's a bear that, if I get in the late game, becomes card draw. So, yeah, I'm going with the Investigator. Um, we also could have picked a Mimic. There was... So, you see a pair of Goblins make it all the way back here is pretty good to know. And Secret Door making it all the way here also feels great. Alright. I think I just picked the Mimic in case I need more 2-drops. I could hold up Mimic and Back of Holding at the same time. Frog Hemoth. Oh my gosh. Frog Hemoth. Wizard Class is a bomb late game card. I just want to... Before I just pick Frog Hemoth, Wizard Class, I've played against it. And you just get to... You just slowly get to level 3 and then you just win the game with it. So I do not want to underestimate Wizard Class. So it's either Wizard Class or Frog Hemoth. If there's creatures in their graveyard, Frog Hemoth becomes fantastic. Yeah, this is this will win us the game. These will both win us the game. It's just which one wins us the game in a better way. Ugh. I think it's the Frog Hemoth. I think it's the Frog Hemoth. But yeah, also Portable Hole's nice. Oof. Charm sleeps great. Like, this is an amazing pack. Let's... So, blue is going to be taken anyway. Let's, let's cut off the green. So, there's going to be something good in blue no matter what. But let's cut off the green. Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Doesn't work in draft. You need... I did the math. You need two Tasha's for that to work. So, I'm not going to waste my time on it. Bulette. How's our curve looking? We need more fours. Well, would you look at that? We need more fours. This is not a bad 4-drop at all. Shocking Grasp. It's... This is often just reduce damage, draw a card. This is basically revitalized a lot of the time. That's how it's been playing most of the time. There's that uncommon creature that brings back spells from graveyards. Oh, yeah. Um, our Aberrant Mind Sorcerer. Good to remember that one. Alright. Well, I'm gonna pick the Bullet. Alright. Tribe Hunter... So I do not want to declare that I'm only green-blue, but, like, my gosh, we've been getting good blue-green cards. Um, and, like, there's not really... Like, maybe these two would be good in the red or red-white, but it's, like, such a deviation. Let's see. Two, 
One, two, three. Alright, so we do need more early drops, I feel. Um, Find a Crossing has worked well at times when my opponents used it to bounce my stuff. I could definitely see this card seen play. Soul Knife Spy, I need a way to get it through. I don't know where that is, is the issue. So I'm going to go with You Come to a River first. Centric Apprentice, great little flyer. Bard class, I don't... This card's great in Constructed. I've been watching some decks using this in Constructed amazingly. So now it's just a question of Centric Apprentice or Ginny Windseer. The fact that we got a pick for Ginny Windseer tells me that blue's pretty darn open. If anything, green is where I'm going to get lacked. Um, yeah, this, this card ventures. It still does its job as a flyer, and it has some great win condition with cards like Secret Door that could help me finish my quests. Alright, so let's see. Another you find the will there. Another you happen upon the great. Hey, if we have a um, if we have a mod in chat, can one of you guys ban the two bots that just showed up? Um, so you happen upon a glade? Oh, three? Oh, there they go. That's them disappearing. Okay. Yeah, you find the villain's lair is not bad, especially since we have a bag of holding, but you happen upon a glade does basically fix our lands if we need it to, and otherwise it does return our bombs to our hand. I'm gonna try out you happen upon a glade. You find the villain's lair might be the correct pick here, but I'm gonna try this one. It also is instant speed, so I could leave up a counter spell and then switch to that when it doesn't work. Alright. Fly? We definitely need more, like, early game creatures, but this is a great way to just turn, like, a Bulet or a Rhyme Shield Frost Giant not only into a bigger threat, but also into a venturing trick. So. Ooh. You never have the guts to pick it? Well, let's pick it. I think it's good. I think it could be good. Trickster's Talisman was amazing last time we used it. Put on Rhyme Shield Frost Giant or something, and they just, like, they feel the desire. They have to block it every single time, and if they don't, you get so far ahead. I didn't even look at the other cards. That's how much I trust it. Neverwinter Dryad as another early game to leave our stuff untapped, or 50 Feet of Rope, which is a win condition. Oof. All right. Another Frost Giant. We're almost done with the deck. The deck can be done right now if we want it to. Well, since we're so close to done with the deck... Um, yeah, I'm going to highlight over this, and I'm just going to look. Is there anything, like, we need? We need more 2-drops. <laughs> we definitely need more 2-drops. Hmm. Pick this in case we have to use it as a pseudo two drop. That's a lot of white and red. So rally maneuver makes white possibly useful. You come to a river. Yeah, not sure how many of those I want, to put simply. Yeah, I think our late game is done, honestly, with the back of holding 50 feet of rope, two frost diets at a giant herd gorger. Yeah, I think basically if we get um, a dragon, that's the only reason we take late game at this point. Planar ally is not bad. But we have a direwolf prowler. We have another underdark basculus to help us get to the late game. We said we needed more two drops. This is a two drop. This is a five drop, effectively. Hmm. Planar ally is great. We might just... We were getting white sideboard back to us a lot, and we actually have enough to support white, especially with a You Happen Upon the Glade. I'm going to pick the Basilisk, but we'll probably end, we might end up getting the Planar Ally on the back, way back around. Um, Oswald Feel Better, in case you're wondering, only really works if you have a bunch of artifacts, and even then, it's like suspicious. So, not even going to bother with it. These are all black and red, so they're not in our color pie. Alright. We wait until the very last second, and still this other person hasn't picked yet. How is that possible, John? How is that possible? Tell me, John. I need to know your secrets. Split the party. The more I play with split the party, the more I worry that's just a trap. 
Owlbear is insane as our mid to late game. I think Owlbear is better than Contact Other Plane, because this draws us two cards, maybe three. This draws us a card and is an amazing card itself. I think this actually beats out one of the Rhyme Shield Frost Giants. Um, just the ability to draw a card and be a threat at the same time. Because one of the main things that happens when I play these early decks is the opponent tempos me out. Wizard class, I did say this is a bomb. This is, yeah, so what happens is you play this on turn one sometimes, you just turtle around, it's a divination later, hey, that's pretty nice, and then you get to level three and it will win you the game. Alright. Thirteen creatures. Hmm. Alright. So I need to decide, do I want a Clever Conjurer? What do I want to pull out? We have a lot of five drops. I'm wondering if Loathsome Troll is just bad. I feel like we have enough late game. It's a question of, do I want a second bag of holding? Do I want a Sign of Stygia? Sign of Stygia having Flash actually makes it quite appealing. I'm going to have the second bag, just in case I want to use that. But we have a full deck, guys. So, I'm not too worried. Alright, two ropes. I We have two bags. I don't want two ropes as well. Oh my gosh. Two mana, two, three, reach. Like, forget everything else that this card has. Two mana, two, three. That's good. Two mana, two, three, reach. Oh my gosh, that's insane. I, I can't believe I almost missed this. Pick five, green was open, and I'm happy to hear it. Alright, another Hunter's Mark. A Contact Other Plane. We have... I mean, we already have um, a lot of value with Bag of Holding and Wizard Class and stuff. So I think the Hunter's Mark just acting as removal is important here. Hmm. I actually like the You Find a Curse Idol over the You Come Across a River. So I'm going to make that shift there. Um... Yeah, I'm really happy with that shift. Don't want a second one. Okay, the fact that there's been 350 feet of ropes, I don't think I want more than one, though. No, 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 no. Um, I'd rather have a second... Okay, let's put a Bulette, just in case we need more of those mid to late game cards. Pick Evolving Wilds in case I need the mana fixing, but that might actually just be dumped later. Direwolf Prowler in case I want the 3-drop. Neverwinter Dryad is ramp for a lot of these good cards. Do like my Clever Conjures. Hmm. What do I get rid of? I think I get rid of one of the Bulettes. We still need to do quite a bit more. Another Dryad. We do have some things to ramp into, and some things that could definitely use the extra mana. So, I'm okay with double Neverwinter Dryad. Alright. Let's figure out where our deck is. So, we, have four, we need to take out four cards. Probably that. One, two, three, four... Five, six. I'm counting Neverwinter Dryad as um, a two drop because I can block and then sacrifice it, get myself a forest tapped. So I'm treating this as a two drop. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, two drops. I think that's our early game taken care of. Um, I think we knock out one Clever Conjure. I think we could. Dude will knock out one of the Neverwinter Dryads. Um, so the question of what is left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're definitely keeping the Hunter's Mark, so the removal is very important. I just realized this works with Underdark Basculus as well as all the big creatures here. That's actually pretty great. And the fact that it can't be countered is also pretty nice. Two good counter spells. Good venture.
Did we take out the the cursed idol? Two, three, four, five. Oof. I like the conjurer because it helps me ramp up. I have so many mana sinks. So. I think I just take out the investigator. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we're a little low on two drops with that maneuver. But we can always pull them back if we find that's an issue. We can always add another dryad. We can always do stuff of that nature. We can also add another bag of holding. Possibly switch out the 50 feet of rope for the bag of holding. Hmm. Which is better, 50 feet of rope or bag of holding? I think, I think they're situational enough. I'll have one of each. I'm happy with that. The wizard class is great in the late game. We could honestly take out another late game for that if we wanted to. Fly is gonna be great with things like Hill Giant, Herd Gorger. Yeah, I think this is, like, yeah. Something of that nature. It's an interesting deck. Hmm. I think it is great. I think it is good. Yeah. And I do want my 17 lands, I think. I want... Because I have more to spend my mana on. Because when I have an influx of lands, I start using Secret Door, I start using Bag of Holding, I start using 50 Foot of Rope, I trigger Wizard Class. Yeah. Um, is there anything else? Hmm. Hold up, hold up, hold up. How many flies do I have? One. We have one flyer. Two flyer. We found a weakness through this deck. We found a weakness through this deck. Alright. Well, let's hope we're not too weak in that category. All right, Paper Samurai. Let's fold you up and cut you to size. Poe goes first, but we have one drop, two drop. Yep, that's good enough. Basilisk should slow the game down for the Bag of Holding to start getting its value. Mm. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna start putting feeds in the Bag of Holding. I'm not gonna... Worry about Tepo that Basilisk, I don't think. Never mind, I'm Tepo that Basilisk. You gonna come across the river on it? By all means, you wanna bounce it back, be my guest. Next year I play the island, Bag of Holding is now. I can now have Bag of Holding ready while threatening to find a secret of Villain's Lair. Ooh. So sorry. Use whatever trick you got, or just let the... Alright. I am okay with that. And it's things like that, which is why I actually like the you find a cursed treasure, because that I can destroy the Ray of Frost. Oh, I'm really sorry for my opponents having no plays. Having no la third land. Like, they went first, and now they're behind on mana, which is a huge problem. Probably gonna get rid of the Fro Rhyme Shield Frost Giant, because I wanna play the Lotus Control. Yep, I'm just gonna play the Eccentric Apprentice. You want to Ray of Frost this too? I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't think there's a counter spell for two mana, so. And we want to complete a dungeon fast. But I don't think it's so fast that we want to switch over to Tomb of Annihilation. I think we still want to do Lost Bides. Yep, I think just. Like, Tomb of Annihilation is just. If they do a surprise play, I could get wrecked. You know, that sort of stuff.
All right, they're at their eighth. Okay, they got their mana. And if we, we assume they're mono blue. Oof. I'm going to attack in. I'll play the Loathsome Troll if they want to... Oh, even better. Even better. Oh, gosh. Mike just got messed up. My apologies. But yeah. Owlbear. Just 4-4. Four, four, big enough to block the 3-2. I could equip the Trickster Talisman, or I could just play Hill Giant Herd Gorger and equip it that. Like... Which one is more threatening? Two Owlbears that also draw me cards, or two Hill Giant Herd Gorgers? Oof. And they went into the Realm of the Mad Mage, so they're assuming they could make it all the way through. Yeah, the fact that they didn't play Lost by Fandelver to scry and guarantee that black land is shocking. Alright, I'm going to play this. I'm going to actually attack first, and then deal it. Or, I could Trickster Talisman, equip the owl there, attack with both. I could get another Owlbear, which the trampling, the trampling draw card synergy, I think, is better than a second Hill Gorger. So yeah, I'm going to do this. Force them to get a response. And then I'll play Bulette. This is where they have Side of Stygia. Side of Stygia does mess with me. Alright. Well, I actually got... I got another card draw off Val there, so I'd still say that's a success. Alright, now we have a Bulette. But yeah, the Counter Temple of You Come Across the River is quite notable. Do I trade the Bulette with a Displacer Beast? Nah, given the life totals, I think I just go in for the aggression. They do have more cards, but I have a bag of holding, I have more tempo, like, my cards are all big. I think I am still in the advantage, despite the card disparity. Alright. My next one, I could create a treasure token, so I could play a Cetric Apprentice and Bulette in the same turn. Is that the best play, though? Otherwise, I could Owlbear and Wizard Class. I actually like that better. This draws me a card. Alright. Watch them play Xanathar and this whole game gets flipped on its head. Alright, creatures have menace. Oh! Destroy an enchantment. Alright, so I like this. So I'm gonna... Invoke Duplicity. And then I could attack. Then in response, Hunter's Mark. Killing it and making sure they don't, like... Have a play around on the threat. And if I draw a land, I could then also Bulette. Ooh, hold up. Cancel. Um. Oh. This does get rid of their board. So, this does also kill my Owlbear, but it deals that one damage, which means Trickster Talisman should trigger. So now I get another Owlbear. Draws me a card. Alright. I'm gonna get the... The Cetric Apprentice out. I kind of want to get the treasure token. Nah. Still not drawing lands. Again, this is why we want 17 lands. Air Colt Elemental. Richard Dark Creature to its owner's head. The 4 4, that's not a body. Makes sense. So my next put plus one plus one counter on creature. 
So I could frog Hemoth. Or I could just, um... Hill Giant Herd. I think I just Hill Giant Herd Gorger. That one land missing is actually being a problem right now. I want one more land. Ugh. All right, so they destroyed that one. They are they are the card advantage game has shifted. If they ever tap out their creatures, cause why wouldn't they? Um, we can frog Kemeth. So if they attack here, which I don't think they should, but they might. All right. So I could play this Outlander, Neverwinter Dryad. Hold up some stuff. Because I want to get this sacrificed. Oh, I can destroy this artifact before they start ramping. I like that. Because venturing is a definite win condition in this format. And I'll just leave up the back of holding to use some effects. Whew. So now they can't venture to dungeons. Yep, definitely love that find an idol. They have one, two, they have two creatures in the grave for the frog hemoth to become a 6-6, six, six, should they let it through. They have two cre they have two cards in their hand, so, and all the mana they need to play them, so. Charm sleep, alright. Glad that they're charming these, this sort of creature. Are they foolish enough to attack with the air cult? No, they are not. That's fine. I'm going to actually throw the blue lats into the back. There's the land. Wait, what do I need the land for again? Alright. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, I needed the... Alright, so I could play Neverwinter Dryad. One, two. One, two, three. Yeah, I could play Neverwinter Dryad and hold up a lot of different options. And then next year I could Frog Hemoth start swinging in. Oh, I could even... Find a secret lair, find the villain's lair to dump cards into the bag. Alright. Yeah, now we're just gonna hold up a bunch of ca we're just gonna hold up a counter spell so that they can no longer, if they play a big threat, like so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that felt so good. Alright. Um, yeah, we're going to draw a card, because I want to draw another counter spell if I can. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to throw the Basculus in there. One, two, three. Okay. I'm going to just play a six, two. Hold up another secret, not really counter spell. Fill the back up a bit more. That's our stuff. Alright. Rolled a not nat 20. I want them to scry two bottom. I'm okay if they don't, but that's what I want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two bottom. Perfect. All right, we're putting the Frog Hemoth in here so we can actually Hunter's Mark and kill one of these guys. Oh, I could do this now. No, I want the mana. All right. So, let's stack with these two. See how they respond. Alright, perfect. So now I could Hunter's Mark to make this guy bigger so the Lowsome Troll doesn't die, and then I kill the Ginny Wins here. One, two, three, four, 
One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna actually get ready to pop the bag. So I'm not gonna venture right now. I'm gonna be ready to sacrifice the Neverwinter Dryad and pop the bag of holding for a bunch of cards. All right. They have no cards in hand, so Frockhemoth's gonna be an absolute monster. Alright. Let's take out the Beholder. Let's place your beast. Morden Kanan and Grim Bounty as just security measures, I think. Now we're gonna take out there. Alright. This is the card they don't know. Oh, they know about all of them. Alright. I'm gonna just venture into the dungeon then. Next track adventure, draw a card, eccentric apprentice turns whatever they play into. Yep. That a very dominating position. They went slow. I did not. We are now gold. All right. But yeah, those hundreds marks. First off, they were there was a lot of blue, so those hundreds marks were extra great. But they seemed good nonetheless. Like four mana kill spell. Like they were not easily challenged. It can't be countered. All right. So this unfortunately is a reroll because. These are all late game cards. Albear plus Fly sounds amazing, but we'll die before we make it. Alright. Um, throw back the Loathsome Troll. A single blue mana gets me Wizard Class and Bar the Gate. Wizard Class is going to give me my card draw. So if we draw an island here, we actually can play Wizard Class, which is pretty awesome. Alright. So, the previous hand had too many lands, this hand has not enough lands. 50 feet of rope is not bag of holding, it's not a good play on turn 1. We cannot block this because it's brave the stench effect will actually take us out. When Dark Basilisk is to stop their bigger threats. We're taking 1 damage a turn, as long as we draw a land soon we'll be fine. You can have your 1-1. One, one. I'm not letting it kill my Underdark Basilisk. Alright. I'm going to do those two. There goes my bag of holding. Well, no lands. Sometimes this happens to you. I have 17 lands in my deck. This is not an issue with the deck. This is an issue with just luck. We knew this was an option, but we did not want to mold five cards, especially... Turns out that was correct with... Oh my god. I am dead. That I might just be game. You couldn't have come one turn earlier. So if I attack this, it immediately die. My... I die, basically. Well, I have Bar the Gates, but they have Zariel. I don't know how I get through this. Because those devils will trade positively with my Underdark Basilisks. Oof. Yep. They had Zario, I had a bad... Like, I'm happy that both happened at once, that I got mana screwed, and I face a person with a Planeswalker on curve. I'm glad it at least happened simultaneously. At least that was a theme. But yeah. Really, I'm doing this for the venture. I need the scry.
when deals combat damage to a player. I can create treasure tokens. Create goblins. It allows me to start venturing, but how far does the venture even help me? They have so few cards left, I think I'm going to go for it. I have so few outs, they have so few cards, I think I'm going for it. I don't like it. I do not like it, but... That's my play. Yeah. They don't have a kill spell. They don't have a kill spell. They have Ray of Enfeeblement, which turns it into a zero, a negative three, one. That doesn't kill it. These things don't have reach. There's no um, Plum the Forbidden in this format, so that's not an issue. Each opponent loses one life. I think we go with the goblin token. I don't like it, but I think we go with it. If I could get a land, I can attack Zariel with this. Hunter's Mark hitting Zariel. Deal four, and that will deal four damage total, taking that out. Which is why the treasure token might be valuable, but I think the lands are valuable in its own way. Oh god, he has Bag of Holding. Such a good card. Such a good card. They actually prevented it. Wow. I have to deal damage to players, correct? Yep. Oh! Got the play. Alright. So now I put a plus one, plus one counter target creature. We're all loading up onto this basilisk up in the air. And I'm just going to wizard class. Next turn I can attack that hunter's mark to make sure it dies. And get myself a good shot, basically. Back in this game. Alright. And with the card draw, if I could find my you find... um the treasure or whatever, I could possibly pop their bag of holding while there are fiends inside of it that they want. They are going into the long game, which surprisingly actually is good for me. Like, I did not expect that to be good for me. Okay, thank goodness for Hunter's Mark, but now we can't, um, Zariel properly. Or now we can't kill Zariel properly. Is that your only attacker? Do you really need that treasure token that bad? Well, Hunter's Mark is going to let us get through this red dragon, which is the important part. And then, yeah, I think I attack Zariel here. Ooh. Well done. Well done. Well, I'm probably going to have to block that red dragon thanks to its emblem. It is only untapping one creature they control. And if they emblem now, then they're gone. Zariel's gone, so I don't have to worry about it. But, like, yeah. Okay, now they have card draw. 
Yeah, if they minus six, that's actually good for me. They should be attacking with their little one ones, but I'm not going to hover over it to give them the idea. All right. Can Wizard Class save me when they have a Zerial on curve? Not in this position. Not in this position. Not when it's drawing forests after I got mana screwed at the beginning. By the way, I knew they had a Ray of Enfeeblement. I knew it, and yeah, I still played into it. Alright. I will block the Chaos Channeler with... Oh, God. That's game, I think. I'm not sure what else I can do now. I have to stop the Chaos Channeler, and that's the issue. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep. Zeriel was too much. I I can't believe I lasted as long as I did, honestly. But yeah, at this point, the card wins me the game. Unfortunately. Yep. Didn't even have the islands for you find a villain slayer. Oh well, as I said, good to get all the bad luck out in one game. Good to get it all in one game. Uh That felt bad, though. That felt bad. I think I did play to my outs well. And yeah, if I hunter marked targeting my one my non-flying creature, it would not have helped me. So, I think my decision was still correct. Huh. Like, the way I need to play around that was to block the um, dragon with my 2-3, have them Raven Feeble me in response, and then I Hunter's Mark in response to the Raven Feeble man. Alright, we have a bag of holding this time for our lack of cards. So, Bag of Holding can help us get the lands we need. And, honestly, Basilisk with Fly, as horrible as it as that is, was okay. Please don't tell me this is the same guy. I don't- I didn't read the names. Hopefully this is not the same person. They're the same color. Alright, well we have a much stronger play on turn one. Alright. If we don't draw a land, I think we do shove something in the bag of holding to get the land. Okay, thank goodness. I'm going for it. Let's see your combat trick. I got hyper ventures here. With hyper ventures, do I want to go Dungeon of the Mad Mage? Nah, nah. I still want. I still want Fendelver. I need the value now. I need the land early. The Scry One is just so potent, honestly. The fact that I can attack, they could do a combat trick, and I can Hunter's Mark in response, feels pretty good. I could grab the treasure and make Rhyme Shield. And that allows me to venture faster. I like that. I like that. So now when I attack with Rhyme Shield and Intrepid Outlander, it ventures into a dungeon, and then I venture into a dungeon again. Alright. So yeah, I could Fungi Cavern 
in like I can attack Fungi Cavern during combat and then in and then draw a card when the Outlander gets through. That's actually really that's a cool combination. This is going fantastically. And this is not going too well for them. I just realized they missed their three drop, their two drop, and their three drop. Also, I have an amazing drop here. Do I want to trick them into losing the clattering skeletons for free? That's the big question. Yeah. No, I could just fungi cavern. Now they then they won't attack. Until your next turn. Oh, oh. There we are. So then I venture for right now. So I'm just going to do that. Give the clattering skeletons way no damage. Still going to block like that? Alright. I'm happy. I do not want to see more clattering skeletons, so I'm just going to Hunter's Market now. Kill their combat trick with my combat trick. And deal one more point of damage in the process. Fortunately, they did not get an island, so we could not play our secret door. We do not threaten that you find a villain's lair, but, eh. Oof. Take out, takes out the intrepid outlander. No other play. Alright, we're going to start by drawing a card and putting this forest back, probably. Hmm. Trying to think. If I attack with Rhyme Shield, they can double block. I'm okay losing, um, trading the dragon. So. Yep. That's what I expected. Let's kill the dragon. I'm okay with this. Question is do I, you find, do I play you find a curse idol? To just venture. Um, yeah, I think so. The it's good mana efficiency. Make sure I get a good draw next. Albert is a fantastic draw in my mind. Now, if they don't have a pl if they have a play, I could Albear get a new draw. If they don't have a play, I could Frog Hemoth and swing in for a good shot. Ooh. All right, they have a play. They had a play. All right, so I now I get to Albear, which is why I was okay with this. So now I draw a card. I have the biggest threat on the board. Okay. Do I... Yeah, I think I just draw cards first. Alright. We'll wait. We can Bag of Holding. We have... It, the longer this game goes, the more advantage we have thanks to Bag of Holding. Huh. And thanks to Wizard Class as well. The combination of the two is fantastic. Let's put an island in here. Okay. So now whenever I draw a card, 
I get an advantage. We're just gonna end our turn here. And at any time, I can tap Bag of Holding to make one of my- to get a plus and plus one counter on one of my creatures. Because gas. Hmm. Unless they have Enchantment Destruction. There is a Beholder that is Enchantment Destruction, so they have that going for them. I'm gonna actually put on the Basilisk. Just keep it safe. All right. So let's see, I could Trickster Talisman, equip, attack with the Owlbear, and as they block, I could respond with a Hunter's Mark trick. I like it. So they have to do a massive chunk block here. Yep. That's exactly the block I would have done. I'm actually more scared of the Brazen Dwarf than the Plundering Barbarian. And now we wipe out their board. <laughs> and they give up because they realize there's another Owlbear, everything's getting bigger, everything's getting scarier. And next turn I can sweet get the Frockhemoth through. Ah. Whew. Things are going good. Things are going good. Just being very slow games. Very slow, dirtily games. Exertus. Probably like the exert mechanic. Even has a character that... Alright. Neverwinter Dryad into Intrepid Outlander into Underdark Basilisk 50 feet of rope. Alright. I mean... I basically have lands, I have plays for a while, and then when I'm done with plays, I have 50 feet of rope. Like... Do you have legendary creatures, bro? I question if you have legendary creatures to even trigger that. If this said venture in the dungeon, only activate if you have a so if as a sorcery and if you have um and if you have a um, legendary creature. Like if it didn't tap the legendary creature, it just you needed one. I have I'd have been more down with that. All right. Do I attack with a Neverwinter Dryad? That's the big question. I am playing the Clever Conjurer this turn, so... I'm a knot. Dryad could always be more lands. Arcane Investigator is not a threat until the late game, and by that time, I'll have other ways of... I, I am the threat in the late game. If things go as planned, at the very least. Alright, so I give this fly, I attack, start venturing, and I play a basilisk and a rope. Man, fly with Intrepid Outlander is actually great. So yeah, fly has been working fantastically. This is actually the third game we gotta play fly, and every time, fly has helped us, like, just solve an issue. Fly and reach. I'm just doing this because this card want, um, has triggers that wants to attack. I need... I could... Hmm. Yeah, I can use um, Clever Conjurer to cast it, so... I'm gonna do it. Oof. Alright. Basilisk will kill a Soul Knife Spy, so I could keep the Conjurer around for Mana Dork. Yeah. Dungeon Descent, unless they have a legendary creature, this is just a bad land. Um, they have to have the tactics. That's the only possible thing I could see them do having. That's the only possible way I could see them making this attack. I'm still gonna play into it. I'm gonna do it like so, so that this thing has to be given the first strike, or else it gets murdered. So this will, if they use the tactics, they gain two life. Yep, this right here. And they kill my Basilisk. It's a, oh, they did it backwards. Did they not realize that death touch? Or were they just so confident?
Uh, ooh, I can still play it. I can still play it. Oof. There we are. And so this thing, when it attacks, it's going to venture with the intrepid outlander. So we're going to finish the quest on um, the venture this next turn. When did you get so good at draft? As I practice more. Oh. Hmm. I mean, if this attacks, it's just getting blocked. Comes through to play tapped. Hmm. In so many ways, I am one mana off from what I want to do. Ugh. I'm just gonna gain a little life. If they want to attack in, let them attack in. Well, all my cards are on the board. Not the best place to be, but it's a place. It's called Tempo City. There we are. Okay. So I could draw a card. Big of combat on your turn. Okay. But I think this is the play I have to go with. Destroy target enchantment. Be very careful to destroy the Ray of Frost. It is sorcery speed, so that's an issue. Planar ally is going to have to be able to attack, and I can't really do much about that. But next turn, I start putting my pressure back into play. The planar ally did help them a lot. Not going to deny that. But next turn, I get an intrepid outlander. I got to do quite a few things. Contact other planes, putting them into the card advantage realm. Got to be ready for that. If they leave the planar ally up to block, I could turn I could venture with this and turn it into a 1-1. One, one. If they don't, I can use 50 feet of rope to constantly tap it down. Like, I have some good spots. Yep, alright. So I can use 50 feet of rope to constantly tap down their planar ally and make sure it doesn't attack again. Alright. No blocks. Alright. So if I venture first, I can turn target creature into a 1 1 with flying. Or I can attack now, and then I can owl bear. Um, if I just attack with this, then I venture at the end, draw a card. Just trying to figure out the value, the value positions of everything, you know? Hmm. I think I just start with these two, attacking in. And I can kill them faster than they can kill me. You get a draw card, and a Centric Apprentice is going to get, start getting, becoming inactive. So... I'm going to Owlbear, so if I draw a land, I can start tapping Bag of Holding as well as using 50 feet of rope. I did not draw a land. But Frogheemoth can attack in. They have to block with two of their things. Oh my god. Well, 
That changes the math. Yeah, when your opponent has a mythic rare, math starts changing. So yeah. Um, can't be countered? <gasps> um, Ward counters it. Okay, so this can't be countered, so it's gonna break through the Ward. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So... Resolve. Decline and still works. Because it can't be countered. Ah, 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 ah. Alright. And then we turn this into just a 1 1 flyer. We attack with both. I think I'm going to just continue with Lost Mine. It's just such a good one. Do I need more lands? Yes, I think so. With Bag of Holding um, and 50 Feet of Rope, I think I need more lands. But I could get more lands later. Alright, they have to like do some big blocks to stop the Owlbear, and they'll still take damage pretty badly. Create a Treasure Token? Or create a Goblin? Goblin ain't doing much. Let's create a treasure token. Or I can get a plus one plus one counter. Put it on Intrepid Outlander. Okay, I have the play, but I, I need to get store I need to get to storeroom. Alright, so I hold this up. So next turn I can attack with Frog Hemoth. Intrepid Outlander. I can get a plus one plus one counter on Intrepid Outlander. He's become good. Oh, I can put it on the Loathsome Troll if they don't have a play here. I think I just tapped down the... Yeah, target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next and taps that. I'm just going to keep that tapped down. Hmm. Target creature can attack. Okay. So I can't venture through that. So they actually managed to stop it with that. Well done. This does not have double strike. Can still venture using this. I think we actually start with drawing a card here. Alright. This question. If I venture, put it on the troll, does that even help me that much? Um, yes, actually. So now, this thing does not have double strike, and this thing is a 1-1 one -one bird. So they need to double block to kill this. And it's a troll. So I actually have the pressure. And that was actually... They now don't have their card draw win condition. So... It's good for me. Wow. Intrepid Outlander taking all the hits for me. Do I want to keep the Planar Ally tap down? Um, no. I want to play Frog Hemoth. I want to eat their graveyard and make a monster. This thing's now a 1-1. One, one. Alright. Let's eat all the creatures. We want to eat Immerith. That low health, I want to make sure no Ray of Frost comes and messes up my plans. And... 
Let's eat these two. Alright, so now we have a 7-7. Seven, seven. And they get a venture to scry two. Alright, so... I'm gonna show you... I'm just gonna show something just so I could state my claim. This... You need to tap four mana... You need to tap five mana total and an untapped legendary creature. My big question was, do they have a legendary creature? They had Ilmarith as their legendary creature. This is not a creature you want to tap. If you're tapping it, it's because you're attacking to draw cards, which is much stronger than venturing into a dungeon. This is why I believe that this card is bad in Limited. Hmm. Or at least one of the reasons. Because it now it's just a tapped... It's a tapped waste. Let me just put it that way. It's a tapped waste. And waste is the worst land you can have in draft, unless it's a specific kind of draft. Unless it's like um, an Eldrazi style draft, which... You know, they could probably do that with Innistrad, because... Um, Innistrad still has one of the Eldrazi, but... Oof. I go first. Forest fly, forest dead. Not taking that risk again. Now I have to take that risk. Well, here's the important part. I can, um, you find a curse idol to create a treasure token and to scry in the process. I'm going to play the basilisk first, though. But yeah, we have 17 lands, and we've had two games where we've had way too few lands in our hand. All right. Offer the trade. All right. Yeah, Hunter's Mark will kill anything with the Basilisk, so that's good and dandy. I don't really want to use Tristan Talisman. I'm going to leave up you find a secret lair. You find the villain's lair. Uh. So if they attack, and I'm expecting them to have a combat trick, I can you find a villain's lair. Could I just draw two cards and discard? Is that even good for me? Yes, because I need the lands right now. Alright, this can get brought back. And this become this is not where I am right now. Okay, and that got me to my lands. I could Hunter's Mark that, but then I can't even attack in. I could Hunter's Mark in response to something. I can find a curse idol, scry one. Okay, if I leave up the mana, I can both Hunter's Mark and get use the old Simtroll trigger. Uh, the main problem with this is if I roll a 1 through 9, I don't get the option of you may and choosing not to. And I need a land. More than a little some troll in the top of my deck. Alright. Let it happen. This was a smart attack because I need to leave up for the Celestial Unicorn. Alright. I don't think it's worth Hunter's Marking the Unicorn. Roll above 9. That's all I need. They have some trick. 10. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, Hunter's Mark another turn. Create treasure and venture. Oof. By the way, they have one creature in their bin for Frockymeth. All right. We always scry. Scry more. We need land. That stops the Ranger Hawk, but I don't see when I have a chance to play it.
gosh, if they have Rally Maneuver next turn, they can blow us out. I cannot block with Intrepid Outlander. Unless it's... They're, if they're attacking with Celestial Unicorn, I cannot block with Intrepid Outlander. Improvised Weaponry. Oof. Alright. Okay, so this is actually good. So now, I have to... I know block. It's... That's bad, but... Now I can play Frog Hemoth, attack with both, allowing me to venture, and um, keep things moving. Um, they can sack their treasure to trigger Potion of Healing to keep the Unicorn alive on other means. I gain a life, I gain a big body. I think this is worth. And I also venture to create a 1-1 one -one Goblin to block the Dwarf Hole Champion. Gonna take some damage for a while. This, I cannot deny, this is some big damage I'm taking. But, I think this is the play. And they cannot stop the Frog Hemoth. Alright, let's see if Frog Hemoth can win me this draft. Alright. Alright. So now I gain a life, get a 5-5. Five five. Dealing with Celestial Unicorn, I could Frog Hemoth to pop the Celestial Unicorn and make it bigger. Alright. The important part is that's not enough damage to kill without Faraday's Fireball. Darn. Darn. Well, it was another land issue. And we have 17 lands. That So, 17 lands is actually one... So, basically, the way that draft works with the 40 card decks, the best land count for it is something like 16.2. So, 17... Yeah, 16.3 or so. 16 and a third. I, yeah, 16 and a third or something like that is the correct land count. So, 17 is the safe number. Which makes this really unfortunate that we got two deaths. I would um, constitute both losses to just not gain my lands. I would constitute both losses to not gain my lands. And I mulligan for them as well, so that's not the issue. So that's just misfortune. Alright. So... I do want to get... If I could get two more wins, fantastic. I'm okay. Like, three wins... Three wins is what you need to at least be breaking even, but you're breaking even with the cards you gain more than anything. So, I do want to get more than this, but if I go three wins, at least I'm not. Go at least things aren't getting worse. This was not a bad draft. This is just bad. Honestly, I I still I blame my losses on not gaining lands. Ugh. I don't think my um, deck is imbalanced in having not enough early game, not enough late game. I don't think there's any issues like that. I legitimately just think that in my deck with proper lands, I'm not getting them. That's it. Alright. I'm so scared, but I have a wizard class which will draw me more cards. So, this is not an easy decision, but I'm taking it. The question is, do I play You Find a Cursed Idol? No. Thank you, Basilisk. Now the question is, do I bar the gate, or do I draw two cards? I think bar the gate becomes better later on, so... I'm gonna draw two cards. Leave this up to block the Fane Blade. Alright. Next turn, I hold up bar. I can find a cursed idol and hold up the bar of the gate. And because this creates a treasure token, I have enough to bar the gate. Don't need any more lands. 
and we'll leave that there. All right. So unfortunately, I can't. I'm forced to block this instead of the Fane Blade. But that's a two for one. Sure, they get a venture, but they just two for one themselves. So I'm perfectly happy with this series of events. Like this is a fortunate turn of events, as far as I care. All right. So I could 50 feet of rope tie it down, and have enough. Nope. So I'm just gonna load some troll. I am more. I am happy to trade this with the Fane Blade because I can keep gain more. All right. Let's see. Then they create a treasure token. You know, what? I could fly and become a much bigger threat by not blocking. I'll let them venture. I'm dealing six damage on the backswing. They have to have a kill spell. Like, there's a lot of things going right for me. I shouldn't block. I shouldn't lose my six two just to stop a venture. All right. Alright, do I keep up the bar of the gates? Because we are getting later into the game. There's less and less things to counter. Or I could wizard class, draw two cards. Or I mean, I could get that pumped up, but then I... The problem is the loathsome troll it being my only creature. Um... I think I have to go for it. Um... Let's see. I mean, if I fly, I create a goblin token. Ooh, I have a weird play. Alright. Here we go. This is a kind of awkward play, but I think it's actually... The correct one. This creature flies. So now it can attack. And I could get a 1 1 goblin. So I miscalculated actually. Um. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I horribly miscalculated there. Um. I could put a plus 1 plus 1 count on to more aptly block the Fane Blade. Um, otherwise I can level this up and just say, yeah, that's my win condition. If I just didn't play fit, there was so many mistakes that turn. Honestly, I made several mistakes that turn. Because I miscalculated, I thought I could fungi cavern and make that creep, make the goblin. I cannot. I can now start tapping down the hill giant herd gorger with my 50 feet of rope. Um, if they put a plus one plus one counter on creature, I don't care. Venturing is strong. I will not deny that, but I am venturing too. And until they get a kill spell for my loathsome troll. Do they have Eye of the Beholder? Because that changes math. Alright. Well, if they have a kill spell for my Loathsome Troll, which there are a few in common at 4 mana. So, they do have a few ways to turn this into a very bad position. Just barely not it. Okay, thank goodness. But I keep drawing lands. And drawing only lands is pretty bad for me. Alright. 7, 3, 8, 4, then I could draw a card by venturing. That's 9, 5, that's not good enough. I still think I go on the aggressive with a loathsome troll, but I think I just tap down um, the hill giant herd gorger with my 50 feet of rope.
gosh. They just had all the kill spells, they had all the count- they, they had a lot of stuff. And I drew mostly lands. The combination was very poor for me. They had a very good curve, I'm not gonna deny that. And they had Lair of the Hydra, which I can't bar the gate on. I am- I am annoyed, but, like, I have to accept that this happens. I have to accept that this happens. But I am really annoyed. I am really annoyed. Not letting that through. At least I stopped that. Alright, give me a little bit of life. Keep me around. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not enough to play those control, but yeah. Ten lands this time. Again, this is a land issue. Wow. Okay, so this guy's deck is good. I'm not going to deny that. I am facing a lot better decks now. I appreciate it. The game sees I am doing good. And now they draw a card. So they're keeping card advantage. Uh. If I don't tap down the hill giant, I lose the game. So. Oh god, and that's the worst possible. So if I draw a card, I literally just draw that and then I lose the game. They won. I drew 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lands. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 playables. Yeah. I had the card draw. I had the curve. I think it was a good decision to keep that hand. I just did not have the playables. Yeah. Yeah. I'm annoyed. I am going to admit I am very annoyed. <sighs> because they can sink all their mana in. Four, f yeah, they can sink nine mana in. And turn that into a nine nine. And, oh, six six, I guess I miscalculated. Oh, it's a green NX, okay. Oh well, oh well, as I said, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you just get, I, I swear that was not the deck, that was just the lands. The land distribution was very poor. Like, this deck had late game, it had kill spells, maybe not as many kill spells as it wanted. I will not deny it could have had more kill spells. Um, bar the gate probably could have been better with something else. Um, maybe I could have replaced um, the Herd Gorger for Conjurer. Fro um, Loathsome Troll definitely played poorly. Loathsome Troll should have been kicked out. Direwolf Prowler might have been a replacement. Maybe just another clever Conjurer. Maybe the Boulette. But yeah, the Loathsome Troll played poorly. Would I have wanted another Bag of Holding? Honestly, with how bad those draws were, Bag of Holding could have saved me. But, like, I can't assume that that's the draws, you know? Fly tr worked great. It basically forced the creature to become a removal. I'm perfectly happy with Fly. Um, Wizard class is supposed to be a slow win condition. It was a little slower than I expected. Probably, yeah, because I have Wizard class, I probably could have kicked out the Hill Giant Herd Gorger as well and just, like, put in another bag of holding. I think that was the correct play. Tr tr note that wizard class was a win condition, top end at five, and that would have been, that is how I was supposed to do this. That was how I was supposed to do this. All right. Well, we went 3-3. Three, three. And I blame my lands. That's still good, that's still good. Do not deny that is very good to gain draft, it's just, it's the bare minimum of what you want. Like, you want to be gaining at least three wins in draft is basically the theme. If you can get at least three wins in draft, you're breaking even, basically. You want to definitely get more, but... Uh. You did good. I mean, you're a two-mana 2-3. Two, of course you did good. Alright. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. 
I hope you're happy. I hope you all have a wonderful day.